Hi everyone, let's take a look at problem 11-2a which deals with cash dividends, treasury stock, and the statement of retained earnings. Kohler Corporation reports the following components of stockholders' equity. Okay, and from the table you can see they have $400,000 of common stock, 100,000 shares authorized, 40,000 shares issued and outstanding, um, and at $10 par value paid in capital in excess of par value recorded on its balance sheet on the common stock is 60,000 and retained earnings are 270,000. So when we add those all together we have 730,000 in stockholders equity. Okay now let's look at the transactions because that's what we're going to do. We're going to work those in journal entry form. January 1st they purchased 4,000 shares of its own stock of $20 per share. Okay. Well, when you buy treasury stock, remember that treasury stock is a contra, um, a contra asset. It's a contra stockholder's equity account. I'm going to slide now so we can show it. And you simply put it on your books at cost. Since it's a contra stockholder's equity account, we're going to debit treasury stock and credit cash. $4,000 to $20. If we multiply that, we come up with $80,000. And that takes care of our first transaction. Okay, now I moved the screen over a little bit and it probably played a trick on your eye there, but there's the January 5th transaction, which is the next one, where the directors declared a $2 per share cash dividend payable on February 28th. Okay, and I'm working it on the bottom part of the screen and when I slide it back I think you'll understand why. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we start off with our opening balance. Okay, and the opening balance was the 40,000 shares. If you remember, there was 400,000 of common stock, um, and they said 40,000 shares were issued and outstanding. And then in our previous transaction, the company repurchased 4,000 shares of treasury stock. Well, when it does that, it repurchases its own shares, so those are no longer considered outstanding. They're still authorized, but they're outstanding. So what that does is it gets us a balance on January 5th of 36,000 shares, then the company declared a $2 dividend. Okay, so if we multiply the 36 times the $2, let me, uh, let me actually probably format that a little bit better. And then if I hit the F2 here, you see I'm simply multiplying the 36,000 times the $2, and I come up with 72,000. Okay, now let's slide this back to where we were. Okay. And I think we were... Right about there, probably. And when we slide that down, you'll see the 72,000 appearing. Okay? So that takes care of the January 5th transaction. Then on February 28th, we pay the dividends declared. Um, and you see that we determine the dollar amount We on the January 5th. We credit retained earnings and debit common dividends payable. Now, I've also seen where some people will use a contra retained earnings account called um, dividends. Not dividends payable, just dividends. And they temporarily use that and at the end of the period close it to retained earnings. But it's perfectly fine and acceptable just to return, uh, just to de debit retained earnings for the amount of the, the dividends declared. Alright, so on February 28th we pay the dividends. So now what we see is the reduction of the common dividends payable, right? It was 72000 written here. Now we debit it, reducing the obligation. Common dividends payable is a current liabilities account. And we credit cash. All right, let's take a look at July 6th. We sold 1,500 of the Treasury shares at $24 per share. Okay, now remember we acquired it at $20 per share. So here's what we're doing. Um, let, me, let me see if I can walk you through this. 1,500 shares at $20 is um, $30,000. Okay, I can slide over to the side and work it if you like. But I really don't think that's necessary. If you take 1,500 shares times $20, you'll get 30000 So now we reduce 30000 of the original 80000 we had put on our books. Remember, Treasury stock normally has a debit balance, so we credit it, reducing it. Then we also received proceeds totaling $36,000.
How do we come up with that? If you take $1,500 times $24, you'll get $36,000. And when you reissue Treasury stock for more than what you paid, you're not allowed to record a gain on it. It's considered, um, it's considered sort of like a distribution of earnings, but not a component of earnings. So instead, we would credit paid in capital for the difference between um, what we paid for and what we reissued the Treasury stock for. So the amount we would need to record is $6,000, which would represent um, the, the difference between the 20 and $24 price. So that's $4 times 1,500 shares. Okay, that takes care of July 6th. On August 22nd, we sold 2,500 shares of Treasury stock for $1,700 per share excuse me, for $17 cash price per share. All right, so now, uh, why don't we do the easy part first, and I'm going to do this one off to the side. Okay, now I've slid over to show you how we're going to work this August 22nd transaction. Now, the transaction appears in the, right there. Okay, right in this area, we see the transaction. All right, first we'll do the easy part, determine the cash proceeds. And maybe I ought to indent this a little bit so you can tell which is which. 2,500 shares times $17 per share. Okay, if I do that multiplication, I come up with 42,500. All right, let me move that there. Okay, so the 2,500 times $17 per share is $42,500. Then we next determine the cost of treasury stock. Let me line this up so we can see where I'm doing that. And that's 2,500 shares times $20. And again, it should be in dollars, so let me turn that to a dollar formatted. That's $50,000. Okay, with that in mind, we now have the key information that we need in terms of calculations. What I'm going to do now is slide us back over and I'm going to use the 42.5 and the 50,000 we just wor worked with to show us how we do this. All right, the cash proceeds is 42.5, so we're going to debit cash for 42.5. The original cost of the Treasury stock we just calculated was 50,000, so we credit 50,000. Now let's focus on the 6,000 debit you see to the left of my mouse, paid in capital and retained earnings. Okay, well what's happening? Well, essentially we're selling the Treasury stock for less than what we paid, right? We're selling it for $17. So in effect, we have a loss, but when we trade on our own company stock, we're not allowed to show that loss on the income statement. It's considered a return of capital, if you will, or a distribution of capital. That's how you need to think about treasury stock transactions. Okay, with that said, we first, the rules tell us, we first need to reduce any paid in capital we have on treasury stock and from there if we still need more to re more um, to make the entry balance then we take it out of retained earnings so in our previous transaction to the left of my mouse here you see that we had recorded six thousand of treasury stock on the previous transaction in this case by selling twenty five hundred shares at seventeen dollars per share we've had a difference of what is that uh... seventy five hundred dollars so we first debit the 6000 all that we previously had on our books at, in paid in capital for treasury stock. That brings its value to zero. But we still have got another $1,500 to go before we're in balance. So we debit retained earnings um, for $1,500. And that's how we record a reissuance of treasury stock below cost. If we had no treasury stock, I'm sorry, if we had no paid in capital on treasury stock, in the treasury, if you will, then we would have taken it all to retained earnings. Okay, let's slide up and look at the September 5th entry next. Okay, right to the left of my mouse. Directors declare a $2 per share cash dividend payable on October 28th to the September 25th stockholders of record. Okay, now I've moved the screen over and I want to concentrate on what's new. Um, I'm using that side calculation again. The items in green here, green shade, are what's new. Um, and first off, since the last transaction was supposed to be as of record of February 5th, 
I switched the date right here to say February 5th. It said January 5th, but um, uh, I was mistaken. It really should be as of February 5th. Okay, so what happens now? Directors declare a $2 per, per share cash dividend payable on October 28th to the September 25th stockholders of record. So we need to determine how many shareholders we have on hand on September 25th. Well, we had two reissuances of Treasury stock. Let me hit the F2, and you see them. We had the issuance of 1,500 shares. We, um, we reissued those at $24 per share. And the, the, and the 2,500 shares were reissued at 17 And in the previous transactions we've gone over. Okay, so if we had 36,000 shares based on February 5th, since then we've added those two reissuances, gives us 4,000. We now have 40,000 shares uh, as of September 12th, 5th, and as a, two, a $2 dividend per share tells us that the dollar value of the dividends should be $80,000. And I really don't need the cents showing here. Okay, so then what we can do is slide back and show that. Let me pause it and I'll put, put the screen back where it belongs. Okay, so now if I slide this down, there's the debit to retained earnings to reflect the new dividends. Oh, and I guess uh, I've been giving you the rows here. Let me slide this over a little bit so that you can see the rows. Um, and then we credit common dividends payable, a current liability. Then on October 28th, we pay the transaction. So this should look familiar to you. We now reduce the 80,000 liability in credit cash. Okay, makes sense. And the next transaction we need to look at is December 31st. Okay, now I've slid back up. At the top of the screen right here is the December 31st transaction. We, the company closes 388,000 of credit balance uh, from net income. In, in the income summary account to retained earnings. Now remember, if during the closing process uh, we have 388000 appearing as a credit balance, that means we did have net income. If it was a debit balance, and this occurs after you've closed the nominal accounts, right, the revenue and the expense accounts to income summary, um, if we had debit a debit balance in income summary at that point, it would mean we had a net loss. But we had net income of 388000 So let me slide down and I'll show you how that entry is made get it to slide here. Okay, so 388,000 is going to be the dollar amount. We're going to debit income summary, which will then um, make in income summary go to zero. Keep in mind, income sum summary is just a temporary or a nominal account that is just used during the closing process. And we would, um, I slid a little bit too far, but that's okay. And then we would credit retained earnings. So that shows how income actually uh, closes into retained earnings. And uh, that's this problem, everyone. We've gone through all the transactions. Okay, thank you.